Well, thanks for joining. Uh, I'm Vince Grano with Deviate Music Blog. And with me, I have two members of Space Space. Um, Hi. Hi. Jake Ingalls and, and Eric Martin. Gentlemen, I appreciate you, uh, you stopping by. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us. Of course. Well, um, we're here to talk about uh, the upcoming project, Eno Enomoya? Enomoya. Enomoya. I didn't butcher it. That's good. Eric uh, had the slick idea to insert the name into one of the tracks that's going to be on the record. <laughs> um, Is that what, difficult? I what a thought. <laughs> well, I I had written all this like sort of culty gobbledygook for Maggie, who's on Mothland, to read over this track that we did, mm -hmm. and like last last minute idea, Eric's like, "What if you just had her say Anamoya like as a fade out, and that way people can know it?" So if you get towards like the end of the record and you're like, "Let me fucking say this," now you know. It'll yeah. go. It'll be like Anamoya. Anamoya. Maybe like, oh, there ah, it is. There they is. Said it's it. perfect. They said it. It's perfect because I had to ask what it is. I had to Google what it meant. And now people will know how to pronounce it. And by the end of the record, they'll know what it means, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that. That's like the cool thing, like what I was saying earlier about using sort of like just different words than you would typically write with when you can kind of explore into other languages and stuff like that. Cause like, what's that they say is like language is the first abstraction. Yeah. Something no like matter that. what the first time you say something, it's not really what you were trying to say. Right. right. And when you start exploring other people's vernacular and crazy other words, you start to go, Oh my gosh, I can't believe there's a word for that. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Which is cool. Yeah. Um, I would define it back to your thing. Sure. As the way I came to understand it was a longing for a time or place that you've never actually been, mm -hmm. which to me was sort of evocative of, I mean, I know, at least for me, and I think for you, we write a lot of stuff that's sort of like, I think in like the union archetype of things, mm -hmm. we are sort of like escapists and you're trying to provide a release for yourself and for other people. Right. But we also are always like doing like a slightly retro thing. Mm -hmm. And you're sort of like, well, we fucking weren't alive in the 70s. Why are, we, why are we trying to write a record that sounds like a band from the 70s was just teleported here? Yeah, yeah. This alternate reality. I, it's, it makes sense you saying that because, you know, so many people try to emulate what the 70s uh, did for, for music and what the 80s did, but they weren't alive. So... They, they weren't actually experiencing it, which comes with that sense of animoia, I guess. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and it's sort of like, at some point, I don't know, what do you think? Well, <laughs> I mean, at some point, you don't want to, you don't want to hang on too much nostalgia mm -hmm. for your sound or for what you're trying to like be i guess so we'll never let ourselves slip too far into like a cookie cutter i guess well i don't want to say that we're not a cookie cutter but uh you know you don't want to like be too on the nose with something so right i did want to talk about the cocktail pairings because i read that you also provided some like accompanying cocktail recipes to go with some of your tracks and right. I want to know who initially had that had that thought because I think it's brilliant. Well, I don't know who initially had it. We're always, you know, trying to do something different. Yeah, and it's sort of a natural evolution because Eric here is like master cocktailsman. I do, I do work. Yeah, um, <laughs> it makes I do work. Oh, uh, oh, uh, me, <laughs> me, and me and Big Red or Daniel, we both bartend um and still bartend mm -hmm. so maybe i had mentioned it basically i was like you know i'm like I, i've been able to work at a couple of places where i was able to dj you know the the music at the mm -hmm. bar and that was where i was like i want to have a record that someone could dj like start to finish because i mean you can do like playlists and stuff but right, at right. these particular places sometimes they were like vinyl bars so like 
you'd be encouraged to listen to a whole album mm -hmm. but you know without having to like physically put it on you know sometimes when you're just lazy you just like hook it up so being able to play the whole record some people will like will really like it and they want you know, i always ask you like what you're playing so to give to give us an opportunity for someone to like be inspired to play that at a bar mm -hmm. and that's like what this record started out as and so for each song we probably all three of us just sort of like started lobbying the idea around of like promotion and stuff and then we encouraged to just like write recipes you know for the song. yeah well and i think even like almost like any other idea that just evolves over time i think it was 2015 winter tour we didn't oh have any God. we didn't have any money right to right, pay right. anybody for like a tour poster yeah but we needed to put something out and i was like anybody got any ideas and eric goes we should make it look like a cocktail menu and that was cool like that turned out pretty cool it just yeah like a yeah thing and then i think like we were putting out the sky in the road song which is eric's tune mm -hmm. and pr is like what do you want to say about the song? And he just threw out a cocktail recipe which, oh, right. as a joke, which I thought was fucking great. Hilarious. And we didn't continue the conversation. I just like typed that into the email and sent it. Yeah. And then that same tour. So it's like, we have the cocktail menu as the poster, the mm -hmm. single that was like the only PR behind it was space space described sky in the road as this. And then there is a bit where I think you were pushing for us to try to do like a specialty cocktail menu at venues. Right. Yeah. I would, I would and, love, I always, always thought it'd be hilarious to like guest bartend at a, at a venue. At a know, venue. Yeah. And just like travel around like that. Well, that didn't pan out because I think you're not like legally allowed to a couple of the venues, Some places you can. a couple of the venues did like, the promoters would work with us. I don't know if you can get behind the bar at Rick's yeah. top, but we'll do a space space margarita. And you're like, what's well, cool too. All right. We'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> so that's just we'll sort of like in. lobs off of Eric kind of being a goofball and then yeah. turn it into like, Hey, we could probably start like filming little cocktail videos and just putting it out with the thing. And then I'm like, <sighs> and then I'm like, bugging him like hey will you come over and make a cocktail i gotta it'll only take two hours because i gotta film it at five <laughs> yeah. different angles and then yeah. cut it together and put it on tiktok i i think it's hilarious like i'm envisioning eric i'm envisioning me at a space space concert and he's behind the bar and then when it's time for you guys to go up he just puts the bottle down walks up on stage and begins the set like how great would that be Dream scenario. You're getting paid to be there. Somebody else sound checks and sets up your gear. Then you yeah. hop on stage and play as a surprise. Sounds sounds pretty great. Sounds pretty great. Um, you know, you have past singles on the project, long time, um, happens all the time. What, and I know this is a tough question. If you had to pick, what one track do you think kind of embodies the project and kind of will propel it? I think we both agree on that one it'd be it'd be one of two i would say yeah okay. so the first single that we released was panoramic view and that was just sort of like all right this the vision that we have is like totally happening and it sounds right mm -hmm. and then so like we'll just go on from here and then i think the next one was rain passing through yeah and i think both of those tracks for different like different reasons Especially Rain Passing Through, I think just embodies like every like every like little like vision of the of the sound. Mm -hmm. Like in the one song, like, it's got like you know a little catchy like riff, and it goes into this really like soft bridge of like you know uh, you know like like nighttime by the pool cocktail hour vibes, mm -hmm. and then it has a big psychedelic throwdown for the the bridge as well so right and, and sort of the spirit both of those i think encompass like encompass like the the spirit of the recording process it sort of set a tone because like panoramic view for instance all we had was this like phone in the middle of a room demo yeah of you and maybe it was me and big red just you and big red playing this song and brought it in 
put it into like one mix bus and then like filtered it out and like chopped it way up Mm -hmm. and then started adding like different drum samples and playing stuff and reorganizing it and once and then like rain passing through same vibe but there's stuff from that's like from the like crappy iphone demo that's in panoramic view like all those drums are Mm -hmm. from the like eric's iphone that we just like tossed a phaser on and kept in for like little transitions Mm. but yeah it was sort of it was tough because our old stuff we would like you know four or five of us three of us be in a room all together jamming away on the idea adding Mm -hmm. stuff learning it at the same time and building it and at that juncture i think we'd had two members quit and another one that we left so it was really sort of like just kind of us two and daniel being like um we're we're (laughs) we're not calling it right (laughs) right yeah, so so it was almost like the fewer ideas you could cram into a song, the better. You know what I mean? Yeah, that yeah, sort of makes perfect sense. So every idea just becomes its own little path that you can take and turn it into something else. And those two, yeah, kind of set the tone and have all like the tinkery, like per, like percussion, coke bottles and triangles and stuff. Yeah. And that sort of stuff. it's like, okay, let's like imagine that we're on this like other imagined future that looks like in my mind, it always looked like you see like ads in the 60s for like booze and like somebody yeah. in like a weird suit for no reason. For like, no to reason. Me, that was where we were. You're like, all right, everybody's wearing this like weirdly like Barbarella sci fi looking stuff at a cocktail party. And that's what yeah. we're doing we're cocktail party. It's a it's a cool vibe. I, I know I, I can't wait for the record to come out um i'm sure your fans feel the same way yeah um, i can't it either it feels weird that it's finally happening the 28th a year or two <laughs> yeah for that there's like a day like a week before that um we're not releasing the single but the video for millions and memes which is the next one okay and that song comes out and we already have a bunch of stuff in the pipeline too a little b-side follow-up for the summertime and then a whole other batch of tunes we've been cooking up too. Nice. It's cool to finally like get to where we're about to start playing these live in a month. Yeah. At the same time, you're sort of like, I was was teaching some bass lines last night and I was pulling up. We were like pulling up some of the older stuff from Sun Kids. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, she's like, you know, there's like a million plays on that one. We got to play it. I'm like, yeah, but we could also instead learn this bass line for this one that we just recorded and finished and it sounds really sick <laughs> but it's got to feel good it's got to yeah. feel good any uh any potential shows in chicago yeah we're actually booking i just got off the phone with our booking agent a few minutes ago um i think august okay is when we're coming through chicago but it'll be nice yeah we got a good may tour coming up february tour and then I think we hit it again in August. I think we'll be in Chicago in August. Excited to have you guys come through Chicago. Excited for the record to come out. Um, I appreciate you guys making the time to chat with us. Quite the uh, quite the roller coaster of a of a conversation, but that's that's how we like it. Nice. Well, thanks for having us. Of course, of course. Um, Anamoya out the twenty eighth, um, and I'll let you guys lead us out. Any any parting words? Mm. No, I hope you like it. I hope you like it. <laughs> Tell all your friends. Uh, if anybody shops at H and M and you hear our music in there, send us a video. I've seen that it's on the store playlist, but no one's. My friend Margaret sent me a video, but I want to see it not in L.A. Awesome. Yeah, we will. Because <laughs> I do shop at H and M, and I will go in there and, and figure it out. They have rain passing through a long time and happens all the time on there right now. Cool. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. We are in the bind. Just get by.